Yes, into boxing. Sorry about the technical difficulties. This happens from time to time. He was, uh, wasn't quite sure where to go. But still, I've told him now, so he's going to be coming on a second. We are live at Into Boxing on the Box, right here with me, Dan Hewitt, only at Into Boxing. We are proudly sponsored by Rival Boxing. Uh, and also, check out our store online at intoboxing.com. Um, we've got some great things happening. Check out our recent interviews, the likes of Deontay Wilder's trainer, Mr. Joe Cortez, International Hall of Fame referee. So guys, make sure you keep checking out. Now I'm going to bring on my guest, um, absolute legend of the sport, uh, Mr. Fred Aquendo. I'm hoping I can bring him on very soon. I did bring him, I could bring him on, and then he's just left. Um, but hopefully we can bring him on. God, let's start again. We'll get there. Friends, if you could just send a message, if you just literally comment for me. I've seen you said I'm here. I don't know if you've left and then rejoined. Well, you bring it. Where's sing us a song while you wait? Do you think I am, mate? It's some kind of singing waiter or something. Crazy punk. What do I think about Callie and Brandon Rios? Brandon Rios is washed up, mate, if you ask me. Uh, thanks for the question, first of all, but I feel that Brandon Rios is... Uh, is, is way past it, if you ask me. I'm going to try. I guess now, legend, Mr. Fred Sequendo. I'm really hoping I can bring him on because this guy, is, to be honest, what I like about this guy is he's a top, top, top. I'm going to be going to get a message from you in a second, Fred. All you need to do is just watch the screen. It'll come up and press the green button. But this guy, is he's an incredible human. That's what I like about Fred Sequendo. He's, what he does for charity and for people is, is second to none. So... I'm hoping, fingers crossed, with him being all the way over in the US, uh, that we can get him on the show. But uh, Cali versus Brandon Rios, uh, yeah, I think that I uh, didn't get an answer from him. I'm going to try again. Hopefully, he'll come back on in a second. Strange. Um, but yeah, Brandon Rios against Cali. I think uh, Cali beat him all day, to be honest. Uh, Brandon Rios is, was a good fighter, but he's never really been um, someone who was, uh, I don't know, what can I say, like a a world beater. I'm going to try, I'm going to give you a chance to request to come on. If you're at the bottom, where it's got the likes off, Fred, you'll have like a circle, white circle with a green person in there. If you just press that, I'm um, hoping I can bring you on. I'm going to try and add you again. If you just come on. Um, but again, Mr. Got Mr. Fred Aquendo coming on the show. Um, he was, I've just sent it over to you now, so you just stay where you are. Hopefully, you can just press the green button and come on. I will bring you on, even if we have to come over to America and bring you with me. Josh Groombridge, fantastic fighter. Thanks for watching. Tony Lafferty, again, thanks for watching. Looks like he's joining you right now, so stay where you are, friends, and hopefully we can have a good chat. It's connecting, so hopefully it'll come through in a second. So, yeah, we've got Mr. Fraser Quendo coming on the show. who's soon to fight for a fantastic title. Uh, we've also got Alfonso Lopez, um, former continental American. I can hear him. And now I can see him. He's here. How are you, Fraser? Can you hear me okay, Fraz? Good, good, my friends. Good to speak to all my people. Look, I'm losing a little bit of signal. I, you coming yeah, in and I'm, out, but... I'm losing a little bit. Out. Hopefully, we can keep it going. Yeah. Hopefully. How are you? Good, good. How Amazing. You Thank you so much for coming on the show. Hopefully, the signal won't be too bad, and I keep you going, and I can speak to an absolute legend like you. Thanks for joining the show. So, great. So, obviously, Thank to you, tell you. people, I'm sure people know who you are. Um, I mean, you're, let's just say, a, a massive uh, part of boxing over the last um, so many years. So, yeah, fantastic fighter and, again, a fantastic man. So, thanks for coming on the show. So, what kind of got you into boxing, Fred? Yeah. It's okay. We'll get there. I'm sure some of you Americans are running on the jungle. And, um... I'm you're, you're coming in and out a little bit, so I can't really hear you too well right now. Hopefully we can get that. So don't worry, it'll, it'll come, it'll happen. We'll make it happen. <laughs> so what got you into boxing? All right, cool. Boxing in 1986. A Golden Glove fighter before me, 
and uh, he used to bring a lot of trophies. And I one day told my mom, man, I want to start bringing some trophies in. And the rest was history. Awesome. So tell us about your amateur background. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm uh, me, Foy Mayweather, David Diaz. Well, we just think a few on the same 1990 National Golden Glove Championship team that I won in Little Rock, Arkansas. And we actually got to meet uh, at that time President Bill Clinton, who just got inaugurated. And, um, you know, that was very prestigious win the Chicago Golden Gloves five times. You know, so I had a pretty lengthy. Uh, you didn't do too bad, did you, Pres? That's for sure. So, very, very good. So, kind of, what would you say was your best achievement in boxing so far? My best achievement in boxing so far uh, is uh, when well, the fight. I mean, it's my verdict in the federal case against the courts, uh, the promoters in Chechnya. You know that they didn't pay me my my money and they gave my rematch with with uh, Ruslan Chigayev. But as far as you know, my career in the in the ring, the fight that brought me into the spotlight was the Black Rhino. He was a undefeated, highly talented prospect back in the early 2000s that everybody thought was going to be the next Joe Frazier, yeah. Mike Tyson. And uh one of the times, most knocked down in the fight. And uh, it was my coming out party. Well, you certainly done very well. Guys, stay with us. Though. There are obviously a few technical issues, but I'm hoping that we can, we can keep it going for sure. So kind of, you know, obviously you've... You've had a quite, you've probably seen, you've got a very, very successful career, uh, to say the least. But there's been a lot of fights that you've, I think you've lost seven or eight, and most of them you haven't lost. So, can you tell us about that? Yes. Yeah, very controversial. You know, my career has been, of course, with the Chris Bird debacle. So, everybody's seen me dominate Chris Bird like no other heavyweight. So, they ended up robbing me. You know, of course, Don King, my former promoter, he wanted me to sign right after him, right after that fight. And, you know, I just got my freedom away from that criminal. Leo, get down, get down. And then, um, you know, when I fought uh, James Tony, that's another one that, you know, I fought in his backyard and I ended up dominating him. His promoter was Dan Goosen. And unfortunately, I got the short end of the stick in that one. And, um, and of course, you know, Oliver McCall, um, John Mormack, uh, uh, and of course, Chigayev, my last time fighting for the championship. I hurt Chigayev in the 12th round, and they actually shortened that round I mean, in the 10th, I believe. 10th, 10th round. It was supposed to be three minutes. They shortened it to like a minute and 30 seconds. It was just very controversial in Chesnia. But it was a great experience. I Fantastic. And I've, when I was reading through, obviously, I've, I've always been a big fan of yours anyway, but reading through what's, you know, what's been happening in your career, it's pretty mad how, how we've managed to get that. Alfonso Lopez, again, is going to be our guest a little bit later on. Alfonso, keep watching. I'll bring you on after I've spoken to our man here. So, kind of, you're, you're, I'm open. I'm right in saying this, but you're, you're scheduled for a very big fight. Am I right in thinking that? Yeah, it's correct. Uh, it's going to be for September 29th in Cologne, Germany, against Manuel Char, hopefully, finally. I was supposed to fight last year against Shannon Briggs. You know what happened with that? <laughs> Cheaters never win, and 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 now his career is cut short. So that is for the WBA heavyweight title. What's that? And that's for the WBA title. Is that right? Can you be okay there, Fred? It's okay, don't worry. I've got, I <laughs> I've got kids of my own. I can hear you now. I've got one of my own, mate. <laughs> don't worry, right. mate. It's great. Thank you very much for speaking to us, mate. I, I, go I can hear you fine as well, to be honest. So you must have better signal where you are there. Don't move, don't move. <laughs> so, yeah, of course. So you're fighting Manuel Char for the, uh, the WBA. Heavyweight title um, in September. Fantastic. We're looking forward to that. Um, what again? What are you thinking about that? Are you looking forward to it? Do you feel? I mean, obviously you are. I'm around thinking you're 45 now. Yeah, I look forward to it. You know, 
And age ain't nothing but a number. You know, I've been taking care of my body for many, many years. You know, I, I never abused it. Never did drugs, or alcohol, womanizing. You know, I'm pretty much, you know, live a clean life. As you can see, my kids will keep me young and keeps me going. You know, my little ones. And and right now, you know, I'm just focused on finally being called the Raw Heavyweight Champion. Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. So do you feel that this is your last shot at a heavyweight title, do you feel? I mean, you know, it's my last raw. I yep. mean, let's be realistic. At my age, I mean, it hasn't been done since George Foreman. So it's something that, you know, I'll be in the history books, you know, once I achieve this, this remarkable victory. So uh, I'm lo really, really... Fantastic. And it's, it's a pleasure for us. I mean, we speak to fighters all around the world and to have a, you know, a heavyweight, you know, challenger, the world challenger, uh, just about to fight for it. It's a real pleasure to have you on the show. It really, really is. Now, looking at Char, now, someone I know well, I'm sure you know My well, pleasure. looking at his videos, he's nothing flashy. He's, I think you could easily win this fight. If you are the same fighter you've been throughout your career, he's very much up and down, European, boring, yep. no disrespect to Manuel Char, but yep. he's, he's wrong no, no. for you, isn't he, really? He's wrong. You're wrong for him. Yes, I mean, he's tailor-made for me. Yes, yes, I mean, you know, again, you know, I don't disrespect any champion, but as far as all the champions out there, you know, I, I look forward to the fight, but Mano Char is the one that was given the opportunity, and, you know, God put me in a great position and to finally be crowned a heavyweight champion. Of Pretty the amazing. I'm really looking forward to you doing it as well, because what I like about you, and I, I didn't write this down, I didn't prepare this, but looking at your fights, is there's a reason why they call you fast press. I mean, you're a big guy, 6'2", I believe. Is that right? I'm thinking that. Or do you just say you're taller? Yeah. <laughs> but you, you're, really yeah, yeah. you're really fast. And you, you kind of throw your shots. You don't throw your shots in ones like a glitch or anything like that. You throw lots of shots, and you're very accurate as well. And I think uh -huh. that if I was to put a bet, I'd put, I will be putting a bet on you. So, definitely. Zach Jelly Sr., thank you for joining. Juan Curiel again, my friend. Thanks for joining. So, looking at kind of the, the people you fought think. in the past, um, looking at kind of the likes of Holt, you fought Holyfield uh, to, uh, like you were saying, mentioning a, a little bit earlier on, Jane, um, Tony, you know, these fighters are Hall of Fame fighters. I mean, these guys will be, always be remembered, no doubt, just like you. Uh, but who was the biggest puncher you think you faced? Uh, it was in the undercar of Mike Tyson when he fought Francois Bolta, the, the white buffalo. It was, it was June, actually it was January 11th, 1999 on the undercard of Mike Tyson and Francois Bolta on, at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. And it was a 1996 Olympic silver medalist, a uh, Nigerian name of Duncan Duckaworry. He was a highly touted prospect. He was like 15 0 with 15 first round knockouts. Okay. And I was well, supposed to be one of those heavyweights that they, they fed and, and, and just laid by the wayside. But he, it was a rude awakening for him. I ended up knocking him down twice and out in the sixth round. And uh, that fight pretty much, you know, uh, actually put. Uh, put me in a, in a nice little status to get the big fights. Amazing. Awesome. I love in these answers. So who do you feel? So you are, of course, uh, I mean, where are you ranked in the world right now? So first thing I didn't really look at, where are you ranked in the world with the authority? WBA number one. Number one in the WBA rankings. But, you know, they always fluctuate, you know, one, two, three. Ain't no telling where they got me now, but. Yeah, I was one that last that I, you know, I checked. Who do you feel ago, is so I don't know. the number one heavyweight in the world right now, apart from you? Um, you know, <clears throat> it's gonna be an interesting fight. These two, you know, giants, you know, young giants by the name of uh, Anthony Joshua mm -hmm. and Deontay Wilder from the U.S. And uh, it's gonna be very, very interesting. You know, it's one of those fights that. It kind of can be unpredictable, but I give the edge to Anthony because he's more a complete fighter and more defensive mind, you know, not defensive minded, but more technical as far as good defense and offense. So it's going to be interesting. You know, Deontay Wall is very deceivable. I mean, he's, I mean, yeah. very awkward and you don't know what, what a person. Definitely. So, so you're, of course, then you're fighting for. The, the, just to remind everybody, he's just joined the WBA 
um, heavyweight title in Cologne against Manuel Char um, in a couple of months' time. And we, all of us here, or a quarter of a million of our followers, really, really will be behind you and shouting for you without a shadow of a doubt. But looking at kind of, you can't look past your next opponent, always. You've got to look at who you're fighting first. But I like asking anyway, is there anyone else that you'd like to fight, maybe win or lose this fight? You know, God willing, you know, I get past this fight. Um, I won't mind unifying the title, you know, fighting one of those big guns, you know, the one of Deontay mm -hmm. Walter and Anthony Joshua. But, you know, they're promoters, you know, out of politics in this game, you know, might prevent, st you know, that fight. So right now I'm just playing it fight by fight, you know. I mean, in this game, it's nothing. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. And I wasn't going to ask this question, but uh, one of our uh, followers and also a good friend of mine, Shabazz Maverick Masood. Um, who's just won his first fight, um, is a very, very talented lad, um, a, a pro over in, in right. Britain. Uh, what advice would you give to a fighter starting out? Oh, yeah, you know, make sure, you know, he gets up, do his road work, very important, run those stairs a lot, and always listen to their advisors, your trainers, your conditioning coach. Those are very, very integral, and make sure they drink a lot of water, stay hydrated, especially in the smaller weights, you know, in my weight, of course. I lost you a little bit there, Fred. Hoping you're going to come back to me in a second. We'll soon continue what we were doing anyway. Hopefully we will. Spicy. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be with us in a second. And uh, can you still hear me, Fred? But yes, Shabazz, I'm watching. I've just lost a guest, but we'll bring you back on in a second. I'm sure it's just a signal being all the way over in the US. So Shabazz, like you said there, keep hydrated, especially in the low weights. The stairs and listen to your trainer. Great piece of advice from, uh, I think he's two-time um, two time challenger of a world title, and he's going to be fighting again uh, for a world title very, very shortly. So I'm going to try and bring a fresh back on um, in a second. Um, I lost him, but hopefully... He will come back on in a sec. I'm sure he will. But um, I'm going to be bringing on again another guest very shortly um, in Mr. Alfonso Lopez, El Tigre, um, over again in America. Uh, here he is. He's, he's back on here now. So I'm going to bring Fres back. Hopefully your signal gets better as well. <laughs> That's a good start. And thank you so much for who said that there. Mangan Rick, great interview. Top guy. Thanks for saying that. Fres, you're back. How are you? Like walking right. talkies. <laughs> <laughs> You were giving advice, yeah. you were saying about being re rehydrated for a lot of the lower weights. Yeah, it's very important. Like myself, I drink alkaline water. It's very important to alkaline your body. You know, alkaline, you know, an acidic environment can't stay in an alkaline, you know, environment. So it's very, you know, very important for athletes that, like up and coming superstars, you know, like that prospect to make sure he eats the right food, you know, um, stay away from a lot of fats and sugar, of course. And, um, man, he'll be okay. He's got to make sure he expands his horizons and listen, listen. Awesome, awesome. So tell us about what you do now. So uh, one thing I really look forward to speaking to you about, of course, you're just about to fight for a world heavyweight title. Yeah, you do so much for charity. And uh, tell us a little bit about FOBA and, and what you do. I'd, I'd, love, I'd love to hear about that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I have a foundation that I founded back in 2009. Me and my brother Hector, who's an attorney, he's the one that started me in boxing. We used to bring all the trophies I was telling you earlier in the show. And, um, yeah, we formed a foundation, the First Kind of Boxing Academy, to prevent youth violence in boxing. You know, boxing saved my life. It taught me to say no to gangs and drugs. And uh, I highly encourage, you know, everyone, you know, to see what you do, to log on, F-O-B-A-I-N-T-L dot org. Any donations will be appreciated. It's going to a great cause. And also, I'm part of the hurricane relief effort. I go with a lot of volunteers mm -hmm. and help those in need that has bad water, no food in the mountainous area where it's forgotten. You know, a lot of people go to the metropolitan, the tourist attraction. Of course, that's real nice in Puerto Rico. But when you go five miles in the inland, it's very, very bad. You know, and the people out there are very, yeah. very much hurting still. The health care. It was pretty bad, so that's why we brought the great Inferno, the Radar Benitez, one, actually one of the all-time great boxers in history. And it's sad yeah. that the way we're treating them 
in our homeland, you know, the hospital was just terrible. So I made it with some of my other volunteers, bring them back to Chicago where I'm from to get back better adequate health care. And he seems to do a lot much better. And um, I am hope it's not too late to well, bring Just before I lose you there, sorry. So Wilfred Benitez, of course, is an absolute legend of the sport. So he was, because a lot of people probably don't know about this, you know, especially over no, they, here in the UK. Now, he, he is, he's, he's literally an absolute legend of the sport. So he's, where was he, sorry? Where, where was he being treated originally? In, in Puerto Rico, actually, you know, he was bedridden in his home. And, um, you know, he just kept getting a lot of infections at home. And they stopped right. his treatment, therapy. So he pretty much started, you know, like a in the set. Get him, you know, he was pretty much like in a fetal position. You know, they stopped his therapy, I believe, a year or so ago, and we're hoping that we get him that therapy that that um that he needs to to start to try to walk and, and use the stem cells. So, right now, we're trying to you know get as much donation as we can to uh help this grand champion that we uh wow. dearly love. You know, it's just sad that the country and the government, Puerto Rico, didn't come together to to help help him and his family. Amazing. And you've, you've then managed to move him to Chicago to get better treatment. Yes, that's correct. What a man. man. What a man. Top guy. Absolute top guy, mate. My, my respect. My absolute respect. Not just to yourself. Everybody can check, everybody can check my Facebook, Instagram. They'll see the, the trip that, I'm, that I've made in Puerto Rico to help a lot of, a lot of those they need. And also... The trip bringing uh, Wilfredo Benitez from Puerto Rico to the airport in Chicago. It's on my Facebook at Fresno Kendo or Fast Fresno, or the Fresno Kendo Boxing Academy, mm -hmm. you know, or my fan page. Okay. So you said a little bit earlier. So I listen out. That's amazing. I really, really do. And thank you so much for telling us about that. I like to get different parts of people, not so much of the boxing, also so our fans could follow you. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen my show before. I don't do things normal. I'm anything but normal. But you mentioned, so I'm going to ask you a few different questions, and you've got to answer them. But we'll start, we'll, we'll warm you into it. We'll warm you into it. So you said about Joshua and Wilder. You feel that Joshua would be the bigger, kind of the, the better all-round fighter. The biggest question I've got with, with Joshua is he's very muscular. He's very, very big. We saw what happened yeah. with Frank Bruno. Heart only pumps so much blood around them big muscles. Deontay Wilder could do 12 rounds on his head like that. Do you feel that maybe Wilder could take him down later in the fight? I mean, Joshua showed in, in recent fights as well that he could go 12 rounds. I mean, when he fought Klitschko, he had to dig deep and mm -hmm. ended up knocking him out in the 11th, you know, towards the end of the 11th round, which is not, you know, easy to do. And then Wilder, you know, the same. He had to dig deep to knock out uh, Luis Ortiz was a very dangerous fighter who was my former sparring partner myself in one of my fights when I fought Derek Rossi, actually. That's when yeah. I met Luis Ortiz, and I thought I gave Luis Ortiz that edge to beat Wilder, but, you know, Wilder got that, you know, one punch uh, that could change the fight, and that's what happened. That's it. That right hand is something horrible, isn't it? A Wilder, you've got to stay away from yeah. that, mate, haven't you? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, I don't know if you've been watching lately, but the World Cup is on at the moment. Do you, do you follow... Football or soccer, as yes, you say. Yes, yes. I was uh, seeing uh, Colombia versus Poland. You know, I'm a Latin <laughs> brother, you know, from Puerto Rico. I, you know, I was Who wins? Poland. Who wins you the know, World Cup? Was... Huh? Who wins the World Cup? Man, right now, it's, it's like a pick em. Um England, England. Yeah, I know. You know, England's been doing great. They've been doing <laughs> great. And they're up there. I mean, like I guess I'm not that knowledgeable. I'm from Puerto Rico, a small island in Chicago. So, I mean, I love soccer. I mean, I love looking at it. You know, I appreciate the sport. But as far as my knowledge, it's not as well as your <laughs> Stay to the boxing, then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant, lovely. So here we go, then. Let's go, go to England. Let's go to England, you know. That's a great, great Go on, thing. England. It's coming. Yeah. Home. It's coming. Right. Okay, so here we go, then. If you were to cook, cook me a meal... What would you cook to impress me? Um, We're on a date. You know, I'm into a lot of gluten-free, you know, products. A lot of, you know, 
paleo diet, you know, that, I, that, that I've been on, you know, to keep me nice and, you know, nice and right. You know, they call it the caveman diet, you know. I don't know if you're familiar with paleo. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know, make you a gluten-free pasta with marinara sauce and and uh, Italian meat meatballs. <laughs> when 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 is this happening, Fred? <laughs> right, right, come I'm on, coming around tomorrow. <laughs> come, come across the line. Come across the line, but I'll meet you in New York. Mate, you've got enough on your on your hands with them kids, mate. Same as mine crying upstairs right now. No the deal. So <laughs> I actually I write these questions out and I've made sure some of the things that I think of. I don't know where it comes from. But if you were a gangster rapper, what would your name be? Uh, gangster, I'll be like uh, Project Fresh, because you know I'm from the Chicago Housing Projects, one of the no most notorious housing projects in Chicago, which they call Chirac. So it'll be uh, Project Fresh. <laughs> How about Project Fresh? A uh, Project Fresh. Yeah. yeah. Project nice. Fresh. There you go. I like that. Yeah, Project I like Fresh. That. I think mine would be something like yeah, Chunky yeah. D. Who's that? <laughs> I think mine would be something like Chunky D, something like that. <laughs> Amazing. So what have you got to say to your fans? All, the, all these years, all these fights, Who? what would you say to your fans out there, you know, that, that followed you? I'm going to come to call them to follow you. Yeah, I just want to thank them so much for following my illustrious career. It's been a long one. It's been a hard one, a rough one, a lot of bump, you know, bumps on the road, but... I'm here. I'm still here. While well, everybody else retired and they're gone, all the former top ten heavyweights that I fought back in the early 2000 era, I'm the last man standing. And uh, I thank my fans so much. Make sure they tune in September 29th. You know, in Cologne, for the WBA heavyweight title against uh, Manuel Char. Mate, yes. all I can say is I will be watching without a shadow of a doubt. It's only across the pond. I might even go. But so all I can say is a massive good luck to you and your lovely family. And uh, thank you so much for, for coming on the show. I, I can't thank you enough. It's been a real pleasure. And keep up the good work with the charities and what you're doing. I mean, what a commendable man. You're going to go to heaven, you are, mate, I tell you. <laughs> I will. But make sure everybody donate to FOBAINTL.org for the hurricane relief efforts. Anything, you know, is, is appreciated. And I thank you very much, Dan, for giving me this opportunity to spread a good word. My pleasure. And thank you so much for coming on the show. Good luck and bring that world heavyweight title back home. Oh. Take care. Thanks for coming on the show, bro. See you later. Right. Take God care, bro. What a guy. I tell you what, people look at boxers and think, oh, my wife's the same. When, I, when she knew, when she met me, boxing, I would use a boxer. Oh, an idiot. And so, I, you very rarely meet an idiot boxer. They're all top top people so yeah so of course that's my first guest so as i said look there you go there's there's number one <laughs> so that's my first guest now we've got secondly a mr alfonso lopez who um el tigre now he messaged me a little bit earlier on so i'm going to bring him on in a second i'm hoping that he's still watching i'm pretty sure he is this guy is the former wbc continental america's super middleweight champion um, he is a fantastic, fantastic fighter, and what a great guy too! Another fantastic guy. He's connecting. He's coming with me now. And uh, again, send your questions in. Al Tigre Lopez, how are you? Hey, I'm not doing too bad. How are you doing, Dan? I can't recognize you without your hat, mate. <laughs> yeah, I don't have the hat. Uh, Where's your hat? Colorado, watching some softball. My dog. Yeah, the hat. I left the hat at the house. They wouldn't let me take it on the plane. Not happy about that, mate. Not happy about that. Imagine me on one of them hats. I'd look, I'd look like a potato, I think. So, brilliant. But, fans, I thank you for coming on the show. Again, I've heard yep. great things about you from the guys at ABO and I've followed your career. So, fantastic, fantastic fighter. Uh, the question I always like to say is, in fact, you know what? I'll introduce you a little bit. So, this, of course, is Alfonso El Tigre. I want you to think about that. Lopez, uh, he is a super middleweight over in America. And he is the former WBC Continental America's super middleweight champion. I feel like super califragilistic expialidocious when I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying that. It's quite a long one. Again, amongst other champions. So, again, a second champion we've got on the show within half an hour. So, great. So, again, what got you into boxing, mate? What started you on this amazing journey? 
Yeah, you know, you know, boxing for me started at a young age. I was I was introduced by you know just my my family down in Corpus Christi. We were all part of boxing. We all loved it. All followed it. Um, but I, I wasn't you no know, grandparents. My mom they didn't want to see me compete in boxing. So I was pushed to play the the footballs and the baseball. And uh, you know, I didn't start boxing until I got to college. Okay. Mm. Well, uh, I mean, well, I mean, compete, competing. I didn't start competing. I was 18 when I started competing. Yeah, and so uh, I, I just went straight, kind of just dove right into it. I was playing football at the university at Sam Houston State University, and uh, I uh, signed up for a fight night. Yeah, um, knocked a guy out, and then uh, never really turned looking back. Uh, continued to continue to. Uh, I walked away from the football and kept boxing. So well, you've done a pretty good job considering you're saying you did it so late. I mean. It- you got to be pretty, pretty impressed with that. So a lot of people that look at 18 years old and think, is that a bit too old? It's not. I mean, I started boxing when I was properly when I did when I was little until I was about 20, 21. Look, unfortunately, I had a bad injury, and that's why I look like Butterbean. But still, this is how I keep it with boxing. So it really is never too late. I saw a random comment from someone who was 47 years old and said, I'm looking, I'm looking to try and take up boxing. Is it too late? It's like, no, absolutely not. Even if it's just for the fun of it, you know, it's without a shadow, without a shadow. So tell us about your amateur career then. What what started all this off? I mean, how did you do in the amateurs? Oh, the amateurs went, you know, I dove right into it. Uh, I didn't, I had about maybe, I had... Close to about 35 amateur fights, but I won two state uh, Golden Gloves um, championships. Mm-hmm. And then I went on to the uh, – um, I went on and fought in the Golden National Golden Gloves tournament um, several – two times, you know, back-to-back, you know, 2006, 2007 – or 2005, 2006. Yeah. Um, and the USA Men's National Championships, I went to Colorado where I am now. We were in Colorado Springs at the Olympic Training Center. And I won okay. a silver medal there, losing to our 08 Olympian, uh, Christopher Downs. Okay. Uh, we, I, I, but uh, like I said, I had maybe roughly 35, 36 amateur fights. Um, and so I kind of just dove in, was just thrown with the dogs, fought all the big names quickly. And uh, I've just put in a lot of effort and a lot of hard work. And it, and it you know, it, it was what I was, and that's when I knew it's what I was meant to be doing. You know, boxing was for me. Amazing. Well, you, you, like I say, you, you're not bad either. You certainly give me a good beating anyway, especially with that hat on, definitely. So what would you say, again, is your best achievement so far? Uh, best achievement so far? You know, I mean, the, the, the titles make, you know, the titles winning, you know, winning titles, whether they're minor titles or world titles, they're all achievements, you know. Oh, but, absolutely. you know, I think, uh, uh, you, know, you know, you look forward, like I, I just won this ABO title. Uh, at, that's an achievement in itself. I mean, we, we all work hard, you know, I mean, you'll have some people look at, you know, is, what organization did he win that belt from or who did they have? You know, it, it just comes to, the, to, the, to a testament just to the hard work that everybody's putting in the gym and, and you're taking advantage of fighting other fighters who are, who are consistently staying healthy, staying in the gym and, and staying active and, um, and you keep yourself sharp, and you and you win these belts to meet more fans, to meet more people, to communicate, to network. And you know, I mean, you know, I won the ABO title, and then now look at this. I'm speaking with Dan. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm All over, a live. Yeah, look at this. Thousand degrees over here in the UK. That that's just what I'm talking about. And we really appreciate you going on the show. I mean, we're very, very, very good friends, uh, partners, if if you like, with. Uh, um, ABO. So Juan is a good friend of mine. Uh, I'll be coming over to the yes, actually, um, at the end of the year. Um, so you never know, I might pop up on your shoulder Fantastic. and say, don't there growl you. at me, Tiger. Yeah. That lovely. So go. moving on to, to what we're saying. So El Tigre. Am I saying that right? Is that how you pronounce it? El Tigre. That's right. Yeah, My El Tigre. El Tigre. El Tigre. El Tigre. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. My, <laughs> my, uh, uh, <laughs> My trainer, the old man, you know, from Cut and Shoot, uh, Henry Harris, he was, uh, you know, in the amateurs when we were training, you know, my conditioning and my strength was was how I ju- I would just jump on guys. I would set just okay. a really fast, fast pace because I was still trying to catch up with the boxing skills. You know, I was still trying to learn the fundamentals. I was just kind of thrown yeah. in with the dogs and started getting after it. So I used what what, what I was good at, and I was I, I could set a fast pace. I could keep a high work rate. I could work in the red zone where my heart rate stayed elevated really high and I could, and I was comfortable there. And he, he just came back. He's like, you're just jumping on guys. You're jumping on guys. And I think one of his five favorite fighters was, was the, um, 
was named was as was a tiger name, and so he 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 came back with this cool um, painting, and he's like, "You're gonna be the tiger," and he and, and so ever cool. since then, it was El Tigre. Yeah. That's a great story. You hear some mad stories about people, you know. <laughs> you know, like yeah. with the alias names, like it's, it's like that's quite okay, then. That, that's all right. My when I was that's blind, mine was the pit bull. That was mine because I was sure and I was a come forward fire. That's what looks <laughs> still. I'm sure it's just because I look a bit like one when I do that. that maybe I'm not quite sure. So you caught, you caught obviously you, you won and you uh, bought the ABO tile against uh, a game opponent um, the other day, didn't you? Was it Francisco Cordero? Yes, sir. Ryan Fr Dinkins. Francisco Cordero. Of course, there's only a couple of days ago. Can you tell us a bit about that from your side? I, I, I mean, it was just a tough competitor, uh, Cordero was. I mean, he, he brought in, I, I mean, he over 50 fights, you know, um, and on his record. You know, he, he knocked out about 30-something fighters, you know, so you had to respect his power. Yeah. And he just – he brought a chin and a head that just, I mean, took massive, massive just shots and just stayed in your face. <laughs> I mean, he just he just kept coming. He beat his chest. He'd tell you to keep hitting him, and I was this guy. This guy's got it. Go They're the way. worst, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When your hands <laughs> when your hands start hurting, and you're like, okay, can we hit this guy to the body or, or something? You know, but he'd get he'd get Pulling real low, and yeah, he'd, he'd get real low, and he'd, he'd crouch in, and he'd, he'd he'd protect himself very well, and he'd jump in with big punches every now and then. He wasn't a, he was looking for the big shots, and uh, you know, I just stayed boxing. You know, I'm a boxer puncher. You know, uh, you know, I can punch a little bit, but I like to use my legs. I like to use my movement. Mm -hmm. I like to set, you know, set traps up. But you should so be doing. I just kind of, yeah, you know. And so I, I just, I just was just playing the art. I was just being, you know, being real scientific about it, not rushing, not getting caught up in the momentum of the game and or his. I did some, I did some, 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 some dance moves. Everybody keeps telling me because he kept, he, <laughs> he kept antagonizing me, like beating his chest. So, so what were you doing? I didn't get, I, what these I don't doing? know what I did, honestly. I saw the video and I was like, I did that? Yeah, it was something like that. Very, very, very similar. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty bad. I was like, yeah, don't show that to nobody. They're like, no, it was streamed all over. Everybody saw it. I was like, oh, that's bad. <laughs> Mate, there's nothing you can do that is ever going to be as bad as my dancing. Ever. Like, I'm, well, I don't know if you know, but I'm a singer as well. So like, I'm, I travel all around the country singing and stuff. And uh, I say to every single audience that I sing to, I'm really sorry how shockingly bad I am at, at dancing. I just do like it. Like, that's it. It's that's just horrible. It, it. It's bad, mate. You're a lot that's better it. than me at dancing, mate. I tell you that. <laughs> Amazing. I got to so say hi to my brother-in-law, Wally. He's listening to the show. I got to say hi to my brother-in-law, Wally. Wally, yeah. is it Pacheco, is it? Yeah, Wally Pacheco. That's from Corpus Christi. Wally Pacheco, nice to see you, matey. All the way over in the sunny UK. We don't get to say sunny in the UK very often because it's normally freezing. But still, so you famously fought, of course, uh, unified champion Kelly Pavlik um, yes. on the undercard of Manny Pacquiao against Shane Mosley. Um, you fought the undercard That's there. Um, again, it was a close fight, very, very close fight. You lost on a majority decision. Can you tell us a bit about that? Oh, yeah, it was uh... – what a great fight. I mean, obviously, first off, I mean, fighting the undisputed middleweight world champion, Kelly Pavlik, who just had the, you know, knocked everybody out, right? I think, I mean, yeah. uh, he, you know, Hopkins, he didn't knock Hopkins out. He didn't knock Sergio. He had a couple guys that he did not at the point that I fought him. And uh, it was it was a tough battle, you know. I didn't realize, honestly, that he was almost 6'3 and so big. You know, I was like, wow, that's a big dude when we, when we finally got in front of each other. Yeah. But uh, I don't know how he was making 160 pounds. And just hit like a, I mean, hit like a mule. I mean, just Did he? just had a, a great punch to him, and and he just had all kinds of tricks in the books that I really got to learn from him. But it was a close fight. Um, I went in to win. I went in and I fought hard. I fought a little bit too fast. I got a little bit off the game plan. I was young. Okay. I was I was twenty and zero, uh, and you know I was excited about the opportunity, and and uh, I, he he run me a little fast and and you know he pulled off a close fight i thought it was really close i thought that the fight could have been a draw but um but you know what a great champion kelly Pavlik is oh without a shadow of a doubt and you see that quite a lot don't you with the whole kind of um the, probably the best example you said a little bit about that there you learned a lot from that loss and i think there's a big difference you've got two kind of people people who will go <laughs> after a loss That's or right. someone who will think yeah maybe i could do something else. The best example probably is Canelo. I think Canelo, since he fought Mayweather, 
Um, he's yes, a sir. much better fighter, and he actually looks a bit like him in some of the stuff he does with his shoulder, and he's more elusive than he ever was. So uh, did you pick up a few tricks, did you say, from that? Oh, lots of tricks. Lots of just little things, you know, the relaxation and the inside, the just kind of where to place certain punches on the on the hip line, you know, just, just the, the tiny of tricks that – you know, of like pushing drills and just how they manipulated hands in the inside of just adjusting and, and just the little things that people are really hard to see, you know, and it looks like holding, but it's more like pushing and, you know, yeah. it, it, it's, a uh, you know, how to use your head for leverage and get it in someone's face, you know, just a lot of just the inside tricks and just the relaxation side of controlling the moment, you know, because you're in, you are in front of lots of people and they are, you can hear every single one of them. And when he hit me with a low blow and I had like five minutes and I think I took like 30 seconds, maybe a minute, uh, because everybody kept yelling at you, you know, they're like, come on, let's go. Get in there. And you're like, <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, hold on, time out. You know, and, and you rush yourself into it going like, what, what was I thinking? You do that, don't you? It's like automatic. i like, I think I, when I was fine, I think I got put down once. And I just got back up, and I swear to God, a sniper shot my leg off. I could not stand that. I was still like, <laughs> <laughs> "You just—it's like automatic, isn't it? Just to keep going and stuff." It's yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and you were talking right. about Canelo and things as well. So you also fought on again the Canelo versus Kirkland. Um, Kirkland when, show. I did. When we I spoke to Kirkland not too long ago, and he, of course, you knocked out Gonzalez, didn't you, in that fight? Again, can, yeah, you, can you tell us a bit about that? Again, a massive show. Well, I mean, what, yeah, that was a great uh, a great event to be a part of. You know, Canelo's in Houston. It's at Minute Maid Park. You know, it's right in my, you know, Houston is, you know, you know, just a couple, an hour or so from me. And that's home. It's yeah. Texas, right? We're in, we're, in a, we're in a big stadium. We're at the, you know, and uh, uh, I got the opportunity to fight um, a really tough Southpaw Cuban. Uh, and, uh, and, and in the fight, the first fight, the first round, I threw a, a right hand to try to hit him. He's a Southpaw. And I just had this experience. Strew, I mean, just pop in my right shoulder when I threw the right hand. That's what did and, me. Uh, I didn't know what it was, but I knew I couldn't use that right hand no more in the first round. And I went back to the corner, and I was just in so much pain. I was trying to hold it together. I didn't know what was quite wrong. But uh, come out the second round, I, I, I think he could kind of Gonzalez kind of tell I could, I was a little bit. You know, I wasn't kind of quite using that yeah. right hand. He kind of got a little close, and I hit him with a left hook. That I mean that I I mean I just tried to snap out there really fast and it, it knocked him I and it hit him on the, just flush and it and it hit him so clean that it knocked him out and uh, I squeezed away with there with with a, with a second round knockout really with only having one hand. What you are you know, are and, uh, oh, and I had to go to surgery. It. Yeah, I had to go to surgery and I, you know you know you know I, I had a tour I, my rotator cuff what happened was just ripped right off the bone. And uh, and so I had to go in and have it repatched, and, and it took a, an, an intense rehab. But we got it taken care of. It's an amazing, you know. It's it's great now, uh, you know. And so you know, we're back on. That's the That's actually what happened to me. That's exactly the injury yeah. that stopped my career. Yeah, the the my rotator cuff. It's still I still haven't got it done now. I can't even pick my little boy up. I'm like, <laughs> it's, no, see, it took yeah. you two and a half years to recover from that. Right, I'm thinking that. Yeah, yeah. It, it took a long time to heal from it. I mean, it was a lot of stress. I mean, it, was, it took at least. I think uh, 18 months, 12, I mean, 18 months before I was really functional. But I mean, uh, 12 months, I was started to kind of slightly punch. Uh, but it was, uh, it was, it was, it was very intense. Worst, worst, probably, I don't know. Uh, it's got to be up there in pain. I, I couldn't, it was, it was bad. Oh, yeah. Is it bad as toothache? Days after surgery were rough. There's nothing worse than toothache yes. or earache. Two, <laughs> two things. I don't know. Those two things are bad. <laughs> Absolutely, man. <laughs> so what's it been like for you? So, of course, you're rubbing shoulders with the likes of Manny Pacquiao, uh, Canelo Alvarez. Uh, these these are big-time players. Um, what's it, been, what's it oh, yeah. been like on these big shows with the likes of What's it like rubbing shoulders with? Are you starstruck yourself? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it's, yeah, it's, all, it's, always, it's, always, it's always, you know, it's always a lot of fun. You know, you get out there and you meet these guys and you, and you get to see, like like you just said with the Fresno Quindo, He's a smart guy. He's doing amazing things. You see the things that he's doing. That's, you know, a lot of times we, we see these athletes and we see these high-level guys, Canelo, the Pacquiao's, you know, the Mayweather's. Mm -hmm. And you don't, and to a sense, a lot of people don't understand that there's a lot that they do behind the scenes and they're really just laid back and, 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 and humble people. Absolutely. You know, now some of them, yes, they get in front of the lights and the cameras and, 
you know, the alter egos come out and, you know, and, and, you know, whatnot. But when, when, you know, you get to, and you get to meet them and you get to realize that everybody's just, you know, they're down to earth and they're really Absolutely. cool and really smart guys. Absolutely. I mean, I've got over the next month, I've got 15 fighters looking forward to coming on the show, you know, and everyone I speak to are all just great guys. So again, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. So what's yes, next sir. then for the El Tigre? Uh, I know. Let's see. We're looking to probably get back in the ring in October. Um, you know, do you have a charger? I'm trying to ask my daughter. If she has a charger. Nice. Don't worry. Don't phone. worry. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, uh, they, uh, uh, we, I like to, I, I want, you know, is, um, staying consistent. You know, that, that's been my big thing, you know, um, uh, you know, even just this last fight, it had been for me, had been, uh, almost the whole year out of the ring. And so that, you know, that inactivity is just kind of rough, you know, on the body, even though I stay in the gym and I, and I, you know, we have a gym and we teach classes and I'm in there with clients and I'm always working out, you know, getting in the ring and going through all that sparring and that traveling for sparring and things like that. It, it's, it's, that's hard. You, you just can't, you can't, you know, you got to have those things consistently. And so for me, it's starting the promotional company for myself. El Tigre Promotions mm -hmm. was about trying to keep myself busy trying to be in a little bit more control when I would fight, you know, um, and, and, and having a good time and putting on great shows for a lot of our local Texas, Houston fighters and, 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 and spending time in, in, uh, on the entertainment, you know, for the fans, you know, try to you just to reach out and show them that, you know, it's not about, you know, yes, these guys are out here, they're putting their, their lives on the line, they're fighting for their, you know, for their families. 100%. But in a sense, let's come out, let's have fun, let's enjoy, let's have, you know, a good time. And, uh, and leave everybody truly excited about what they just witnessed on, as, on the show. So we're going to try to stay busy. I, I'd like to fight in October. I'd like to defend my ABO belt. It's, it's a beautiful belt. I'd like to defend that belt. Juan was, has been amazing. You know, uh, he's been in to total contact with me, checking up on me, checking Great up on God. Cordero. Yes, um, you know, and uh, we've, we've been – we've um, Cordero's doing well, and everybody's just been in really good spirits, and you, you, have to, uh, you have to appreciate that. And those are the type of people that you want to work with. Um, you know, uh, looking out to help others and, and, and help in the communication side, on the networking side. And it's been a lot of fun. Awesome. Great guy, Juan. He's sending me a belt, actually, over. So when I get one, I'll send you a selfie. There you go. That's a spicy about. little <laughs> selfie just for you. Yeah, oh, you gotta, yeah. And you're going to have the hat on with it. I want to see the hat. i got to have the hat. Oh, uh, mate, I've got to get myself one of them, mate. I look like Ricky Hatton. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> But still, so here we go then. So I've been really kind to you uh, so far, but I also like to get to know the fighter. I don't know if you managed to see these silly questions, but I, you uh, know, one people remember me for being so stupid. If I'm going to be this boy, oh yes, you did really well in 1912 uh, fighting Chikorito. Do you know what I mean? You'd never ever remember me, you know. So here we go. Some yeah, questions. Yeah. Are you ready for this LT? I, I'm ready. That's He's it. ready. And just before I do, some of the fans who spoke. So Amanda Garcia. When you should be working, but Fonzo's on. Talk, talk. <laughs> Zara and Pacheco. Uh, Zach Alexander, you're the man coach. It's very good of you. Um, George Jose, what's up, Alfonso? Guys, thanks for, for commenting. And keep them coming in. Yes, so I'm going to get to answer you some questions in a second. But here we go. Here's your questions. Question number one. If you could steal... <laughs> that sounds bad from the start. But if you could steal someone's talent... Not a boxer. Who would you pick and why? Ooh, man, someone's talent. If you want to steal someone's talent? I would steal Jose Altuve's talent. He's Ooh. a little guy. He's a baseball player from the Houston Astros. You know, got cut, was told not to come back. His talent is, I mean, he's got to be like the heart of gold, right? I mean, just like, I mean, he was determined. If you don't know his story, is he was, when he first tried out for the Houston Astros, was kind of cut and told not to come back. Mm -hmm. goes home dad's like go back he goes back and now you know you look at the guy and what he's done makes the team and now look at the guy world series champion i mean that level of i guess his talent would be i mean wow i mean just to, to well, the audacity the the courage the never give up attitude the men the mental strength that that guy has to possess to do what he does as such a little guy in, 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 in the mlb um that that that's that's impressive uh, a, a truly, a truly great story for that. You guy. like him, don't you? I'd steal what he's got. I take it. <laughs> I just want to be him. <laughs> Brilliant. Here's your next one. 
So you come across a bear in the woods on foot. Ah. What do you do? Do you run or do you try to scare him away? <laughs> yeah, I probably would. I don't know. I, I think I'd run. <laughs> I think I'd run. Yeah, I'd have to I'd scare run. him. I'm not very I good at running. Weapon. Maybe I had a weapon. I don't know. Hopefully. Hopefully I was smart enough to have something with Freedom! me. Freedom! Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm running. You're running. I'm okay. running. Yeah. I'm well, running. thing is, yeah. hopefully, I'm not with you. Yeah, I'd probably get caught. But hey, that's why I run. I run a lot. You know, I could. I've run a couple of marathons, so maybe I maybe I get a chance to get away. You need to take a big lad with you, like me, because you just know <laughs> that if you run, I'm the one who's going to get eaten, and you can just run away. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Amazing. Tigers don't run. Pretty sure they oh, do. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I'm running from that bear, baby. <laughs> Thanks for your comment, David Austin, mate. So, <laughs> phobias. Now, I'll tell you what mine are first. Now, I'm terrified of anything that pretends to be alive. Like, I've normally got something around because I'm a little boy. Um, but puppets, that kind of thing, and spiders and sharks can't deal with them. What are your phobias? Yeah, uh, you know, I'm not big into uh, getting in like a, you know, uh, the ocean. You know, I hate the the feel of you know something just brushing up on you. Uh, I just cannot stand that. It's like, so I'll get out there, I'll be messing around. As soon as something touches me, I'm like, yeah, I'm out. I'm not going any deeper. I'm good. I'm good here. I'm fine. <laughs> no, but uh, uh, you know, not too many things like that. I mean, um, I'm not a big fan of snakes. You know, uh, okay. I hate, like you know, we live on a farm. You know, and I'll be running, and then I could be running my mileage, and now this is this is just this training camp. I was running, and I'm I'm just looking at the ground, and there comes a snake. Just I mean, it's right there by the grass, and I I jump so high. <laughs> I mean, it, he I, I was just running along, and then boom, I was I just jumped. This 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 tiger can jump. Yeah, tiger. I sprung up, and I was on the other side of the road, and I was like, yeah, I, the pace picked up, and I was I'm gone. And I was like, whoa. Oh God. no, mate. And to be honest, I'm not bothered about snakes. Snakes are just like, I don't know, just grabbing said, it's just like a belt, isn't it? I mean, it doesn't really, <laughs> don't really do that that much to me. But I can imagine if I'm running and I see a snake there, uh, I'm not going to be happy about that, mate. But the thing no, is, I probably God. won't be running. So I think I'm all right. <laughs> and the snakes you've got here in the UK are about that big. So I don't think like, no, uh, no, yeah, no. too much of no, an issue. No, no. <laughs> not, not that big in Texas. <laughs> so, again, to your fans then, so people who've, you know, gone through all this, uh, 28 fights, is it 28 fights you've had? Uh, 30, uh, yeah, 28 and uh, 28 and 3. Okay, so what have you got to say to your fans then, you know, who... Uh... Uh, I mean, I, to all the fans out there that support El Tigre Boxing, is, 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 I owe them a huge thank you. I mean, they've, they've stuck with me from when I fought Kelly, you know, from the, from the very beginning... We're fighting in Corpus on a, on a Vander Holyfield undercard was my pro debut, um, wow. you know, to the Manny, to, to the pay-per-view with uh, Pavlik on a Manny Pacquiao, to coming out to Houston and fighting on the Canelo show. I mean, I always had tons and tons of fans show up, and they've always, they've always supported me, and I owe them a tremendous thank you. Um, you know, I started the promotional company. I've had, I've had such a, such a huge, great experience with just not only my partners, but just people coming and, and and getting behind us and really wanting to see us succeed. And, uh, um, you know, I, mean, I owe them a, a big thanks, a big shout out, you know, know that I, I am back, you know, we're working through it. We're almost, we're going to be a hundred percent and we're looking to get back to those big fights. You know, that's where we want to be where, uh, everybody can be there. Everybody keeps telling me, when are we going back to Vegas? Everybody wants to go back to Vegas. Is there anyone <laughs> you'd like to find? So, Is sir, maybe a big name out there that you think, I fancy much. For me, a big name. You know, I, I love to fight any big name. You know, for me, I, I you know it did. Like, I think I've always someone's always said, "Who who would you like to fight?" I mean, you you just want to fight the big names on TV. I mean, the guys that you see that everybody knows that are great fighters. Whether you win or you lose, you always will be known for being in the ring with those those Absolutely. champions. Now, Andre Ward's. I mean, Andre Ward is retired. Can you imagine you got into the ring with mm. Andre Ward. You know, I mean that that's he's an incredible athlete. He's a hell of a champion. I mean, uh. You know, from the to the Kovalevs to the Canelos, the Triple Gs, all those guys. You you know, you you just want to share the you get the opportunity to share the ring with those guys. Yeah. What a what you no, know, it'd be that'd be great. That'd be awesome. 
Unbelievable. I, you're a great guy. Honestly, you really are. And a big part, of course, being a professional sponsors. That's, a, again, a massive part of, of being a professional. What, what do we sponsor you, mate? Yeah, yeah I got you know, so I got some uh, great sponsors. Uh, Anglia Homes in, in, in Houston, and, uh, you know, they're, they're my, my biggest sponsors. I got to owe, you know, Thomas and his dad, Mike Manners. They've done they, – they're totally behind 100% El Tigre Boxing and they're behind me. Thomas uh, – uh, is a buddy of mine, and he's actually does some boxing training with me. And uh, uh, and like you said, he, here's a guy who comes in, starts boxing. He's 30 years old. You were just saying, you know, so I'm 30 something years old. They want to start boxing. Yeah, we started using it for fitness. Then we start using it to, you know, feel better about yourself. You yeah. know, you help with your, you know, um, just your attitude and the way you wake up in the morning, how you're feeling. You know, it's uh, it's it's important to have that. And so I do a lot of boxing fitness training. With, with clients, with people, with kids, adults, you name it. But uh, Anglia Homes, I owe them a big shout out. I got all the guys that keep my body in line. Finish first, uh, injury prevention specialist, Chase Banks. I could do uh, with some of that. Get them on the yeah, phone. Yeah, those to are me. my chiropractors. They keep my shoulders right, my back right, my neck right. You know, uh, they, they do an amazing job. Otherwise, you end up like this. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, I got, you know, are you familiar with the cryotherapy? You've ever ridden those those cryotherapy machines that uh, freeze down negative. Oh, cryotherapy. You're talking about when it's freezing cold. Yeah. Freezing cold. Yeah. I, I, my, I got my sponsors there. They core sports recovery. They, they, I go in there and they just, I get, I get well taken care of with the freezing and, and the treatment like that. And then, and most importantly, I guess, you know, the, probably the, my most important and they're not sponsored, but my wife, Gina oh, bless you. keeps my diet in line. You know, I, I heard Fred talking about some great food there that he had for you. I was like, dude, can I come over? Yeah, me and you will bring free. both our belts. You, know, you yeah, can bring your yeah. ass. Come on. That's right. He, you know, he, had the, he talked about the gluten-free and he talked about the paleo. And I was like, this guy, you know, that's cool. You know, but that's, you know, my wife gives a great diet. She's a nutritionist there. I finished first. And uh, she does amazing things. And so she's always helped me. She actually... You know, you know, that's how I drop the weight. That's how I put the weight on. You know, that's how we uh, we do a lot of things right. You know, uh, it's all about nutrition. Nutrition is important. Now, that's what when Fred so you was need to get about, your wife on the phone to mine. <laughs> Mate, honestly, I come back and it's it's really warm in Britain at the moment. It's about 30 degrees, which is for Britain and being a redhead. I've, I've <laughs> turned into a prawn cracker, mate. Honestly, I've got to stay away from the sun. I've just come back from Mallorca. Come back and she's like, do you know what I really fancy? A shepherd's pie. I'm like, uh -huh. it's, now I'm sitting here and it's about 40, 50 degrees because <laughs> she's been cooking it all day. So it's like, yeah, but she needs to get on, on that diet with me. Me, you, and uh, Fres can have a good time. It. We got to clean it up. <laughs> we gotta get on that road work, baby. Oh, mate, I've no snakes for me, mate. Mate, no snakes for me. <laughs> so I, I just want to say, really, a big, massive thank you for, for coming on the show. You're, again, uh, another fantastic bloke. So uh, anything again, as I said, guys, if you haven't checked already, make sure you check out our earlier um, interview with yeah. Quendo. Um, we was going to be fighting for the yeah. WBA heavyweight title um, in September. Um, and again, a massive, massive number one big round of applause. <laughs> uh, what's that about? <laughs> but but hey, to, uh, hey. to Mr. Lopez, because he's, he, again, a, a top no, bloke. No, no, big thanks to you. You know, this is, this is amazing. This is, this is great. And I gotta love this. I look forward. I, I want to. I love to fight in front of you know the UK fans. I want to be out there with you guys. You know, hopefully one day we can get out there. I'd love to be out there. Um, they got some of the greatest fans. I mean, you guys got. I mean, you watch the shows. I'm like, God, I wish I could fight there. Yeah. That'd be awesome. You know, what I mean, just because you gotta love that 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 energy. You know, that the thing that that crowd, that energy. That's why I love fighting them for my fans at home in Texas. Where I can bring them all in, that energy that you just cannot do without it, and uh, um, it's a it's a it's a huge blessing for myself and for my fans. I, that's why I, I owe them a thank you just for that energy that they bring, you know, to every event that I host in. And so, uh, but uh, you know, again, just just thank you for having me. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, keep it tuned. If I, you know, if you got the, uh, uh, you know, Alfonso Lopez three on the Twitter, you know, El Tigre Boxing on the Instagram, you know, the Facebook fan page is just Alfonso Lopez, you know, El Tigre. So. Uh, I'm all over the place. I'm always trying to keep up with it. You know, the, the promotional company's got several pages and, uh, you know, you know, boxing is what we love to do. And so thank you very much for having us. Mate. For having me. Pleasure for you coming on. Honestly, it's, I said to the guys who's into boxing about four months ago, 
four months ago because we pretty much speak to all the fighters. Well, we speak to all the fighters in Britain. Uh, Anthony Joshua, Ricky Hatton. I mean, the, the highest you want to be. And I said to him, I'm, yeah. I'm going to try and see you take my hand in, in America. And and now I speak to like the biggest fighters in America. So <laughs> you never know. And I speak to all these kind of uh, governing bodies all the time where they're asking for fighters and from the UK and from Europe and to for world titles and, and everything. So you never know. If someone asks me, I'll definitely put LT Great top of the list. <laughs> All right. Thank my you very man, much. Next time, I will have the hat next time. You better do, mate. You better <laughs> Maracas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and a big snake. Oh, uh, that's lovely. right. There hey, you go. Thank you for coming on the show. Good luck. If there's anything we can Very ever do for sure. you, anytime, honestly, you're a top guy. You look after your family, man. All the best. Touch thank me. Thank you very much. Boom. Damn, look at that cut on that hand, baby. Still got a cut on his hand. No, Hello, just a woman. wedding ring. You look what a new one, mate, aren't you? Thank you so hey. much for coming on the show. You take good care of yourself. Thank you again. All the best. Thank you very much. Cheers, Alfonso. Top, again, two top guys, two top fighters, two champions uh, on the show here at Into Boxing. Um, I would love to see the finish, but for me, he hasn't, even though we've got to be up at half past five tomorrow. Still hasn't. So I've got one more guest um, I'll be bringing on around at half past five. Oh, sorry, no, why am I saying half past five? I've got to be up at half past five. At 10 o'clock this evening. So in about 40 minutes, I'm going to be speaking to a team certified fighter, Mr. Akeem Black, again over in Milwaukee in America. Um, and that'll be my last of the night. I can probably sit down and eat my fish pie now. That uh, was quite nice. I'm going to have a go with that. But make sure you carry on, guys, following us at Into Boxing. If you haven't already, in order to get notification on our We Speak to Fighters daily, um, you can click on the video that when it says right to the top right-hand corner up here, it says um, allow notification next time you go live. So if you want to come and see us again, I'd love to see every single one of you. And uh, thank you so much for being a part of our journey and uh, sticking to, stick to your boxing. Take care, guys.